Hello friends, I welcome all of you to my Rainman channel. My today's discussion topic is on tide. Tide is a very important concept in water resources engineering. Not only in water resources engineering, but also coastal engineering, ocean engineering, or hydrology, or any other multidisciplinary subject that related to water resources, tide has the same importance. So tide is very important terminology in water resources to know about. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how tide forms, how tide generates in the oceans, and how it affects the estuary or river, and uh, how it is related in water resources engineering. So my today's video is all about tide. So without further delay, let's dive into the main topic. At first, let's understand what is tide. Tide is a periodical fluctuation of water level in the coastal area or ocean water or in the tidal river, whatever it is. Basically, the rise of water in the ocean or fall of uh, water level in the ocean causes the rise and fall of water level in the river also. So, tide is a periodical fluctuation of water level due to the gravitational force of uh, sun and moon. Let's understand some basic things about uh, tide. As you see in the screen, this is our sun and this is our earth. This earth is moving around the sun in a elliptical orbit. The moon is uh, moving around our earth. It is also in elliptical orbit in the upper picture as you see. So earth is moving around the sun and the moon is moving around the earth. And the whole solar system is moving around our galaxy. I'm not going into that part. So for our understanding, when the moon is located at the closest point of earth while uh, orbiting uh, through its elliptical path, it is called the perigee. And when it is uh, located at the farthest point, it is called ap apogee. And in case of Earth and Sun, when it is located at the nearest point, it is called perihelion and it occurs at January month uh, and January 2. And uh, when it is on the farthest point, the Earth, uh, with respect to the Sun, epihelion occurs at 2nd July. And there are three types of uh, tide. One is diurnal and another one is semi-diurnal. And, and the last one is mixed diurnal and what is diurnal tide if in one day there is a only one high tide and a, only one low tide that is called diurnal tide and in case of semi diurnal tide there is two high tide and two low tides and in mixed tide mixed semi diurnal tide the high the level of high tide may not be the same and the, also the low tide also not the same so this is called the mixed semi diurnal tide semi diurnal tide basically occurs the high tide the uh, the time gap between high tides is 12 hour 25 minutes in diurnal tide one high tide and low tide occurs in 24 hour 50 minutes so based on how many high tide and low tides occurred in a day tide can be subdivided into three types like diurnal semi diurnal and mixed semi diurnal so again this is the earth orbit around the sun this is our sun and this is our moon and this is our beautiful earth moon is moving around this orbit and it is the nearest point to earth while orbiting through this path it is called perigee if it is on the farthest point it is called apogee and the earth if it is situated to the nearest point of sun it is called perihelion it occurs at january 2 and the farthest point when it is located at the farthest point the earth helion and it occurs on july 2 second july so this is a time series of a tide you see with the time this is our time and in y-axis this is water level so with time the water level is fluctuating see this is fluctuating with time 
this is actually a pressure sensor data pressure sensor is set on the uh, river bed or ocean bed actually it measures the pressure uh, above the water and then it is the converted uh, to depth of water as the pressure increases with the increase of uh, water depth so it is related to the water depth so if we can measure the pressure we can also measure the depth of water that's how actually pressure sensor works so in a month this is this portion is spring tide this is also spring tide and this is nip tide and this is nip tide so in a month two spring tides occur and two nip tides occur if the tidal range is small then it's called nip tide and the tidal range when tidal range is higher it is called the spring tide so what is tidal range let's say this is my tide actually water level with time this is high tide and the this is also high tide and this is low tide the difference between high tide and low tide it is called tidal range in Bangladesh the maximum tidal range occurs at Shondip it ranges 6 to 8 meter in Shondip so when spring tide or nip tide occurs I will discuss it in the next slide so how why this tide occurs actually this tider this tide <coughs> Now, why this tide occurs? Let's understand this figure. This is our earth and this is our water body. Even though sun is million times larger than moon, it is located, it is situated far away from our earth. The gravitational pull of sun is much lesser than the moon so moon has the maximum gravitational pull so due to the gravitational force of moon the ocean water rises and the relative position of sun moon and earth occurs spring tide or nip tide when sun moon and earth in a straight line that is called then spring tide occurs if the relative position of sun and the earth and the moon is 90 degrees see this is 90 degrees if this situation occurs then nip tide occurs then the gravitational pull become minimum so the tidal range becomes minimum and when, when the uh, sun moon and earth located in a straight line then the gravitational pull becomes the maximum so spring tide occurs so that's how actually spring tide and nip tide occurs in the ocean and why this tide occurs tide occurs due to the tidal constituents and there are different kind of uh, forces act on the ocean water and these are called tidal constituents so far there are many constituents like 310 329 330 maybe 330 constituents uh, to generate the tide in the ocean but the main the key tidal constituents for semi diurnal are m2 s2 n2 and k2 these are the main four tidal constituents for semi diurnal tide and diurnal tide there are other uh, there are these are the key constituents k1 o1 p1 q1 mf and m 
M M N S S A. So, if you know the water level in the coastal area or in the tidal river, you can get the tidal constituents as well. Or if you know the tidal constituents of any particular area, you can generate the water level at the same time. So. If you require the tidal constituents and you have the data of water level in the tidal river, you can get the tidal constituents. And there are several tools available, like Mike has also a tool to get the tidal constituents from the water level. And you can also generate water level by tidal constituents if you have available tidal constituents. So that's how tide works in the tidal plane so let's uh, watch a video i'm going to show you a real video to understand the tide in the coastal area seeing that water level is fluctuating uh, it is rising and it's falling with time this is due to the tide so the maximum water level and the minimum water level the difference between maximum water level and the minimum water level it's called tidal range as i told you earlier so that's how actually tide works and this is the coastal polder and uh, this polder is uh, surrounded by tidal river as you see in the screen and there are uh, five regulators to design this regulator you know the tidal water level in the peripheral river when it is high tide the gate of these regulators are closed and when it is on the low tide the gate is opened so that the rainfall inside the holder can drain out through this regulator and fall into the tidal river so this is all about uh, tide that is required to know uh, before dive into the water resources engineering. I hope you enjoyed this video and you have learned something. And thank you, thank you guys for watching this video.